Before we start the video, I would like to say a special thank you to Edward Kozadev? 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 Kozadev. Kozadev? Kozadev. Okay. Uh, I'd like to say a special thank you to Edward Kozadev for giving me the free copy of Playclaw 6 because I owned Playclaw 5 before. And this is not sponsored. He did not ask me to do this at all. I am reviewing under my own decision. And I just want to express my feelings about Playclaw in a video as I did in my review in Steam before. And with that, let's get to the video. Hello everybody, this is Rebecca one slash noobs and I'm doing a software review. So as you can clearly see, this is for Playclaw 6. I got it for free, thank you again, Mr. Kozadev. And as you can see, I'm actually using it to record right now. So I am not going to be touching everything. I'm just gonna go over like the bare minimum of what I can show without messing up the recording. But yeah, um, so let's start off with uh, the initial appearance of how I viewed Playclaw 6. So as you can see here, unlike its previous version of Playclaw 5, Playclaw 6 looks so much more like OBS and honestly it surprised me. I thought it wasn't going to be as good because of the different layout and it doesn't look like this weird compact uh, tile base uh, style anymore. But this turned out to be more efficient and way easier to customize than Playclaw 5 was. So I'll get into side-by-side uh, -side comparisons when I come to it, but I'm just gonna go over the basics of what everything is and then uh, just show what this software has to offer. So we'll start with what's we're faced in front of you, uh, the overlay uh, of what the screen uh, will be. So this is uh, what the video is gonna look like where the numbers are gonna be in the top left corner and then the information like how long the video has been running and then how big this file size is. So as you can see in the bottom left, uh, this overlay can be selected here or you can click on it and then you're able to do certain things in the bottom here for uh, this specific overlay. So this overlay is the output information overlay. So I can click on this or click on that and then I can toggle whether it should show in game or basically on whatever program that it's recording and show of whether it will show up in the video or not, which I won't. It also has individual uh, toggle hotkeys so that way it'll toggle whether it'll render or not in the video. And then it even has output overlay effects like uh, scroll and chroma key. Chroma key is really good when it comes to like if you just wanted to make things transparent but uh, that's pretty much it. Update rate, just pretty much how uh, how fast it refreshes. It shouldn't matter that much, just keep it at the default of two. Uh, and these are all the overlays. So there's quite a bit of them, but I'll just go with the highlighted ones where they're most useful. Uh, web browser, this is really good because let's say that like you want to have Twitch chat or if you want to have your YouTube channel or a video playing, you can open this up, click on uh, the cog while you have it selected, and then input any uh, any URL you want with custom CSS style. I don't dabble with CSS, so I, I leave it blank, but maybe someone in here will, uh, you know, will have, uh, take a fancy to it. So that's the browser. I actually really like it. It's helpful if you want to stream because now you can put any, uh, any chat in here. You can have like, Let's say you can have one chat where it's a uh, where it's Twitch chat, and then another one over here where it'll be YouTube chat, etc., etc. You could have multiple browsers. I just think it's fantastic. Uh, you can even do the same thing with an image. So as you can see, it's no image, but like, and then boom, you got yourself a nice little image. You have this thing where you can put the time. So let's say that like you want to do uh, always see the time in game like you don't want to open up steam to look at the time you want to always have the clock in the top right you can always put the time there you can have it so that way it's a military time or you can have it so it's regular time and if let's say that like you want to uh 
you want to do a speed run live on the video you can set the hotkey to whatever you want to start this stopwatch and then you can uh, have it so it just counts down and you don't have to edit it in everything is part of the um, part of the you know part of the program you know if you want to do like a face cam for a stream or something boom webcam uh, it's pretty self-explanatory and with all those you can always edit the visibility and the render uh, render toggle for all of them so I have it so it's at 1280 by 720 right now because that's what I want to input as and then there's different capture modes there is game capture desktop capture and everything capture I just decided to put to everything because I got lazy I could have put it to desktop but hey it's whatever and then you have your standard uh, recording and streaming uh, settings so you have your regular video settings I keep mine so that way it's constant 60 FPS made my encoder to the NVIDIA encoder you can customize it draw the cursor you can edit the audio tracks I like to keep it in separate files select where you want to save your videos so streaming you have I don't know what the hell most of these are but Twitch and YouTube you can select those select which server that you want to send your stream to put in your key for your either your Twitch channel or YouTube channel and then boom you're streaming just like that uh, I'm pretty sure that if you want to do other uh, I'm pretty sure if you want to do other websites to stream to you can just click custom and it will just show you a URL uh, where to where to post it and then you can uh, customize different places to stream with the software so there's that you can do different hotkeys hotkey or hotkeys are pretty self-explanatory so uh, I'll just skip over those audio capture uh, you can select so that way it uses uh, default system sources or you can add sources yourself and I'll just keep it to default so that way it's always recording my speakers slash headset and then my microphone you can also do it so that way it only captures when you press certain buttons but I wanted to constantly be recording and then there's the regular settings where you can choose the background color uh, have it so that way the overlays can snap to the grid how big the grid is whether you want Photoshop, Photoshop like Zoom uh, Here's, I guess, like the global overlays hotkey. I set it so that way it's page up. Uh, over, overlays auto scale in a game. Yeah, actually, I want that. <laughs> uh, you can have it so that way it limits to how much FPS you're getting. And um, pretty much the rest of these uh, miscellaneous options. And so the only other important thing I can note is the scenes uh, button up here as you can see this again reminds me of OBS at first I didn't know what the hell was happening every time I clicked new scene I thought it would save the setup that I was doing but just remember that when you click new scene you're basically making an entirely fresh scene it, it, it's like making a new file it's not saving it so once you make a new scene that's when you start editing it putting whatever overlays you want and then once you're done you don't even have to save it because basically whatever that scene that you made that will save and then let's say that if you want to go to another scene you click on it load scene and then that's all you need to do you can even switch between uh, which scenes you want so let's say that like I want to switch between uh, regular gaming to how my streaming setup is I can set a hotkey for it but um, I don't normally stream so I just don't uh, put hotkeys and that's pretty much it and I want to now do a comparison between Playclaw 6 and its predecessor Playclaw 5 so at first I was kind of upset because when I looked at this it looked entirely just like OBS and I was like what happened to this unique what happened to this unique aesthetic I thought that it was gonna, you know, be Play Claw's kind of look with these uh, colorful boxes and all that, and I thought it was kind of cool on how they had their own little, uh, you know, little box, uh, little box for everything, and it was like very, uh, it like it had its own theme, but I'm starting to realize that 
not only does the UI kind of make it so it's a little bit, it takes a little bit longer to get everything, but it separates everything into its own individual box. Whereas to here, even though it looks more like OBS, I can change everything from the overlays, easily manipulate the overlays in here, uh, whether they should be shown or not, toggle the hotkeys, even click the hotkey button right here, toggle the hotkeys there, change uh, the desktop, uh, or change the video size on the fly. Uh, I can even change the capture mode in here. And this is all within one screen. Whereas to in here, if I want to do the same thing with overlays, I have to go to plugins, select the specific plugin, click the plugin settings. And then once I think it looks right, I click preview overlay settings. And then basically to do the same thing that I was doing with Play Class 6, I have to preview it and then look around to see if everything looks right. And its own settings are in here, which it just, Play Class 6 provides a lot more clarity because in here, to just simply edit, you just click on it and then tick the boxes if you don't want it to show. But for the plugins, you have to actually individually go into the plugin settings and then go to preview overlays and then you have to manually adjust where everything is, resize it. But in here it's just whatever the hell you want and it'll preview to automatically without you having to go to click on preview overlays. And then uh, one thing I thought was pretty cool is that uh, in Playclaw 5, I was actually kind of irritated because before when I edited the volume, I wanted it so that way the volume, you can just double click it and then enter the number manually instead of using this weird scroll bar to like adjust the volume. Because before I just wanted to get to 40. Oh wow, I finally got to 40. <laughs> but uh, in here for the audio, you can simply just click in and type in whatever volume you want. So that is a huge improvement over uh, Playclaw. Here's one that I'll actually mention in comparison to Playclaw 5 right now. In the process of when I recorded videos, I used to just have it so it's process name only. Because before when I would put process name and add date and time, it would actually, instead of these neat little folders, it would put desk, like desktop process and then the date and time and render it as individual folders within the video folder and it made and it was cluttered because it wasn't really saving it within one folder it's just like oh the process is this and then date and time and it just made multiple folders in the video folder it in the video folder and it just made a giant mess but now when i make it so it adds process name and add date and time it makes it so that way when you when you record it will create the process name so right now i'm recording desktop it creates the folder desktop and then it will record the date which is today the 15th of january and then it will add the time and everything to your uh, to your video so it's just uh one little note it's a big upgrade from Play Claw 5 to Play Claw 6 when it comes to organization. It saves you time and instead of having to like click and drag all the folders, then dragging it to one folder, instead it's always in a neat little folder and always ready for you. They basically converted profiles to scene, so it's basically the same thing. But I feel like with the new Play Claw 6 overlay, everything is much faster to get to, whereas to Play Claw 5, it was unnecessarily separated into its own boxes, which at the time it looks cool. It really does look neat when the boxes slide in and out, but function is much better than aesthetic. And Play Classics definitely covers function way better than Play Call 5. They're both still amazingly great software, both record the exact same. It's just that Play Claw 6 has those minor conveniences that Play Claw 5 fails and just barely trips over uh, Play Claw 6. So if you think that you don't mind, you know, just the small things you have to deal with with audio, 
with how the videos are recorded, etc., then Plate Claw 5 is not that bad. But Plate Claw 6 overall is honestly better. And I would like to give acknowledgement to uh, my previous. Or I would also like to give acknowledgement to my previous review on Steam that I gave this. It is still the most reliable game recorder I've ever used. Out of everything that I used, like Fraps, DxTory, Bandicam, and even the free ones where Xfire that used to be out but now it's dead, <laughs> uh, it was the best. Fraps, over bloated footage, didn't compress at all, and the quality still even dipped sometimes for some reason. And then DxTory, King Close, was great, compressed well, recorded well, but then only worked for certain games. The only one that came close was Bandicam, but then Bandicam still falls short when it comes to quality and also Playclaw. I just feel for some reason the software is able to record a game and not affect the, the performance at all. So like I say in this review, so long as this program is updated, I will never leave it. And it has a great community. You should just, if you have a problem, you can contact the creator or other people that uses PlayCloud for advice. They even have their own support forms if you have a problem. Get PlayCloud 6 if you want a really good game recorder or even a good desktop recorder. Just like how I'm doing right now. <laughs> but yeah, overall, love PlayCloud. Forever will be my best game recording software out of everything. And that's pretty much what I use to record my games. I wanted to make this uh, video because I want to... Not only did I want to give my opinion on this software, this fantastic piece of software, but I also wanted to give a little something back to the creator because he gave me a copy because I've been loyal since PlayClaw 5. And that's pretty much it, PlayClaw 6 great get it if you can and yeah hope that you find that this uh, review was somewhat helpful i just went over the important things that i thought was important and i could easily just show you videos of how it records but if you want to see that check out literally any of my gameplay videos that i've been doing for the last year and they've been all recorded in play Claw 5 play Claw 6 has pretty much the same quality Maybe it runs smoother. As far as I can tell from my latest recordings, it runs pretty much the same. So that has been my review. I hope you found it helpful. And uh, yeah, see you guys on the other side. Didn't we have some fun?